Alright, 6.2 part 2 is the second derivative, or what's going on with multivariable functions, it's the second order, and this is where order is very important, second order partial derivatives. Alright, so in the last set of notes we covered the first order partial derivative. Remember we had two variables, there were two, and it would be extended if there were three variables, we'd have three, there are four variables, we have four, and so on. Again, we do two variables. And I'm going to use, most of the time, most of the time I will use the function notation, although you should be aware of the rate of change notation. So remember, we take a derivative with respect to a variable's change with respect to only one chain, right? H can only represent a change in either x, and that's it, or a change in y, and that's it. Can't, it can't be a change in both because, again, you can't make it it's, it's two different numbers, right? It either represents x or, or y. It can't represent both. All right, well, if I have two first-order derivatives, and I want to find the second derivative, remember, the second derivative is just the derivative of the first, and there are two variables. Well, it makes sense I have to take two derivatives of each of my first order derivatives. And so we get four second order derivatives. And again, this is where order matters, right? Because it matters what order I take the second derivative in. All right, so the first derivative is f sub x. And so when I take the second derivative, so again, I've got my first derivatives, f sub x, f sub y. And so when I take the derivative of each of those with respect to a variable, well, I take f sub x with respect to x. And so there are two x's down there, and that's the sort of the order part. I took the derivative of x first, and then x second. The rate of change notation is I take the derivative twice of my function, so it's the derivative squared, with respect to x twice. And you can write that either like that or um, often it'll be written like that. All right, so it's the second derivative with respect to x in a row, in order. And the same thing can be true for y. I take the derivative with respect to y first, then with respect to y again. So I take the derivative of my function twice with respect to y twice. And now this is where the mixed partials come in. All right, so the first mixed partial is I take my derivative with respect to x and then with respect to y. So x first, then y, that's the order. So it's the derivative twice with respect to x. But I do it with, in terms of two different variables. I take first with respect to x and then again with respect to y. And I take the derivative of that result with respect to y. All right, and then the other mix would be y then x. All right, so I take my derivative of my function twice, now this time with respect to y first, and then with respect to x. As it turns out, now the way you get there is different, but a quick note here. For our functions, the mixed derivatives should always come out equal. This is sort of the check that you've done it right. The derivative with respect to x, then y, should come out exactly the same as the derivative with respect to y, then x. Now, the way you get there is different, the simplifying is different, but they come out exactly the same. All right, so let's practice a few examples. So we'll do uh, the first couple of examples. All right, find the second order partial derivative. So we actually have to take six derivatives. There's two first derivatives. And then there's two derivatives of each of those. So you have six derivatives all together. So I like to kind of split it into, I'll do all the x first, and then I'll do all the y second. All right, so I'm going to find the derivative of this first derivative with respect to x. So the first derivative with respect to x, there's only two x terms, 12x squared, 52x. The rest of them zero out. There are no x terms. And so I get 24x minus 52. And I'm going to stick with that function. Now I'm going to find its derivatives with respect to each variable. All right, so with respect to x and then respect for y. So again, I'm looking here and taking its derivative with respect to each variable. Well, there's just one x term. The derivative of 24x is 24. You'll notice there's no y term. So when I take the derivative of this function with respect to y, well, it doesn't matter what I picked y to be because I can't plug y into it. So there's no change whether y is 1, 5, 10, negative 8. There's no change. All right? And so that derivative is 0, which means the other way should also come out 0, and we'll see that it does. All right, so now with respect to y. 
All right, first derivative with respect to y. So again, there's only two y terms. There's the 30y squared, negative 90y. So I get 60y minus 90. So there's my first derivative. And now my second derivatives. All right, so again, I'm looking at my derivative of y. And take its derivative with respect to y, well, 60, right, 60y. You'll notice there are no x terms in there. So when I take the derivative of my first derivative with respect to y, with respect to x, the 60y and the 90, there are no x terms, so it zeroes out. And so my mixed partials are the same. Right, and that one was a very simple case. All right, let's go ahead and do example two, which is a little more complex. All right, so we've got our function here, x squared plus y cubed minus 18xy. So again, I kind of like to state my personal preference is to stick with one and, and work all the way through. And so I usually start with x, so f sub x. So two x terms, so x squared, which is going to give me a 2x. The y cubed zeroes out. Negative 18xy, the negative 18 comes along. The y comes along. The derivative of x is just one. All right, so there's the derivative with respect to x. And now I take its derivative a second time. All right, so again, looking at this function, its derivative with respect to x is just 2, right? And then its derivative with respect to y is a negative 18. All right, so there's the second derivatives. And then again, I'm going to go over here and do the same thing, but we're now with y. So f sub y first. All right, so there are two y terms. There's the y cubed, the negative 18 xy. So y cubed is going to give me a 3y squared minus 18x. All right, now I take its derivative with respect to both variables. All right, so the derivative with respect to y is going to give me a 9y to the first. That zeroes out because there's no y part. And then this comes out negative 18. And you'll check the, middle, the mixed derivative, and I got there a different way. The mixed derivatives, x, y, y, x, are exactly the same. All right, we'll stop there. I'll pick up the next examples in the next video.